Okay. Um, so let me know if I'm audible or not. Am I audible? Then mention out in the chat if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. Am I audible? yeah okay so what we will do is we will start the session any one of you who have uh, set it up volat uh, volatility or downloaded some ram dumps or did a ram dump of your own system okay well i guess uh, our in the next few classes that we will be conducting they will be completely on ram analysis okay so i mean i will be performing a lot of analysis stuff it's something that the actual analysis will carry on for a day or two then for the next day or two we are going to perform some more use cases for more examples okay <clears throat> i'll be performing analysis on different ram dumps of different os then that all these things will be done using volatility and then later we will you know just move on to some other tool as a demonstration right so consider that ram analysis is um, you know you can say um, important as well as a big practical chapter right uh, which you could expect in the course although it's a part of forensics okay no worries no worries although it's a part of forensics but certain aspects regarding forensics needs to be covered in cyber crime also right so that's the reason we are just you know adding up ram analysis as a separate context over here right but it doesn't mean that we will keep on adding disk analysis and you know image analysis and because the point is it's completely then diverting towards forensics which we don't want to go okay and also the topics of ram action analysis apart from the course where the reason it has been added um, is the fact to give you a taste of forensics also right and the way uh, we describe forensics or the way we teach forensics in our forensic courses right so kind of you could be you know diverted towards those those areas also once your cyber crime training is over right i'll uh, start sharing the screen as well just a minute um just a minute let me just check yeah okay so i'm sharing the screen now share content screen yeah i hope the screen is also visible right now basically we had seen about you can say um tool which was known as magnet ram capture right if you all remember very well right so using magnet ram capture we could actually acquire the ram dump right now before we go into that let me just clear out a few things volatility right so oh sorry it's volatility framework Uh, this particular tool vola, uh, volatility um developed by volatility foundation okay you can say it's the god of memory analysis tools out there in the market yeah it's uh, this particular volat volati uh, vola volatility is you can say um lucifer <laughs> the god of memory analysis tools present out in the market even if you compare i mean this is a cli tool okay this is a cli tool it's a command line interface we need to learn the commands we need to install it properly then only it will work but even the gui tools that you are using 
many of the GUI and well-known GUI tools, you know, developed by well-known company such as Basis Technologies. Okay, so they are producing tools like Cyber Triage. Now, when you are actually working on those tools like Cyber Triage for RAM analysis, yeah, although it has a lot more deep inside and you know visualization than volatility. But this particular tool, volatility, you can say is the base of all, you can say not all, but the base for memory forensics. And using this base, more efficient projects are built upon. Such as if I just was completing the example of cyber triage as a tool for memory forensics or memory analysis. The tool has a lot of other features for, on its own. But the initial, the initial baselining of cyber triage also, okay, it's a paid tool. Initial baselining of cyber triage also is done on volatility. So even if you're using cyber triage, even if you're using the premium edition of cyber triage, okay, um, when you'll actually feed in the RAM dump over there, the analysis that will be done on the RAM, I mean the profiling, um, the service determination, sorry, the OS determination and all, it will be done using volatility because cyber triage, in fact, is using volatility in the back end for some things, for a lot of things, you can just say. Okay, so that's the reason volatility is, we can say, the god of memory forensics. On this, everything is based upon. Okay, now, um, if I just go into releases, 2.6 is the latest release. And what you could do is you could download this exe file executable, uh, such in my case, this over here it is, right? Then you can download for Mac, you can download for Linux, you can even compile it separately, manually, as source code. Okay, so you can see what are the things that are being updated. Things are frequently updated, okay? So release December 2016, uh, right? So after that, I don't know whether uh, how much time it will take up more for them to generate a new release, right? But the point is, you only need to do is click on over here as zip file will be downloaded, extract the zip file and here you will find the volatility. Simple as that. Things can be a bit complex when you're doing it in Linux, right? There could be some dependencies and all that are externally required. Um, now, in case of Windows also, uh, certain windows need, uh, you know, Visual Studio uh, service pack, something, uh, you know, Visual Runtime C++, right? All those other things. So, better to run it in your native Windows environment, the actual one, because almost all the um, required things are being present over there right now what i have over here is i have written a small page okay uh, for today's class right or uh, probably i'll just you know keep on updating this pdf also if if you are comfortable with it so this book i mean this notes it's not something that is in terms of a complete guide on volatility it's something that is really restrictive towards our course and whatever we need, right? So once the class is over, the commands that I'll be using throughout the, co uh, the throughout the class for referring to those commands, this will be useful. So no need to go through any in-depth article or something, and you know whatever you want, you will find, right? So this is something which which is in regards to you only, right? It's not something which you could, you know, share with others and they'll try to understand, okay, what I've written. Right? Uh, basically, there are a few use cases in using volatility. Okay. Now, if I just talk, okay, so I don't have the presentation. I, th I thought it is with me, but it is in my different Linux machine. Okay. Um, just give me a minute. Um, just a minute, okay? It will be done soon. Okay. 
just a minute i'll just somehow try to fetch that small presentation so that few things are cleared more easily okay Okay, no worries. It's not been there. Ignore it. Yeah. So let us do our casual method. Okay. So we'll be discussing a few things over here. Basically, RAM information. help us in determining a lot of information okay if i talk in general i mean you could also you know interact if possible or you could just note down in the chat see memory is you can say and uh, integral part i mean one of the most crucial part of um, an os operating system correct and using using this thing actually we could see or we could at least get an idea on a lot of a lot of things couple a lot of things quite a lot of things basic in fact basically if i just want to talk about it okay. now uh, adding to a few points that in fact we could even you know just go through while considering the memory forensics or memory acquisition you can say memory analysis right i hope i am audible i i think so my mic yeah anyways hello yeah so uh, what, what are the things that i was saying basically what actually we could even do so let's let's understand about a ram first of all so so you may be aware of this fact that Maybe as soon as a program is closed, what happens? Any idea? So as soon as a program is closed, OS will cover the memory or other tasks. Okay, this is our initial, you know, functioning or something. I'm just trying to. give you an um a brief idea nothing else so that we understand that how the memory is playing a role right basically the contents in the ram are continuously changing okay that is the reason it is known as volatile evidence right highly volatile not even volatile highly volatile and in fact changing in the sense it's changing so often even for example you know uh, we we talked about um magnet ram capture correct even when the magnet ram capture is doing an is creating an image of the ram while the enter uh, magnet ram capture is you know creating the image there could be some content that has been changed already right so you cannot always you never cannot get a latest copy of the ram image ever continuously changing continuously right also second thing how the disk dumps or how you can say the disk um, image can be verified using the hash values ram dumps cannot be verified this is one of the challenge faced now the ram dump is of the same size that of the physical memory that is present Okay, and uh, at times random may run slow. Random may run slow, but not as or as disk images, disk imaging. Okay. 
now windows 7 higher and all they must have special admin privileges you know to access memory and run the tools via admin and also that is also kind of a challenge right now you can say as soon as a program is closed the ram already or the os already starts to utilizing that memory for other process right so what happens it's kind of rewritten again and again the information is rewritten okay so that's the reason ram is always you can say referred with old information because we cannot even we cannot ever get a latest copy of it never ever right now another important another important point that into always understand is all information in the ram will be lost once the machine has rebooted when the machine is rebooted basically okay this is an important point that we need to under again understand right now what are the things you can just say things we can analyze via memory forensics what are the things you could even analyze via memory forensics so um you can analyze the list of running processes then you can uh, go out and fetch specific process information and go out and fetch ignore the spellings network information of the process is running right you can even identify malware signs or behaviors right you can just identify the keystrokes okay at times you may also get the username and the passwords then lot of things basically lot of things you can yeah command line information right so these are few of the things that actually you could i mean more than there are more but i'm just listing a few uh, known and the famous ones or the ones which i know um, you know verbally as of now right so these are the some of the things that you could even you know fetch from ram okay next one need to what we need to understand basically that the limitations that are been you know present are a certain than that all we discussed right but the number one it changes and all right so this is what something i have told and number two at you know we cannot get always a latest copy of any any ram any ram dump because even while the imaging process is going on the information that is there in the ram it it you know it keeps on changing right and then special permissions are being uh, the special permissions are basically required right now there is a lot of things that can be involved in this memory forensics in fact we can even take a class uh, not class you can say we can even take 10 to 15 sessions separately on memory forensics but that is not the co- case because we don't want to make a course of memory forensics uh, there are a lot of couple of other things that you know play in role while considering memory forensics such as kernel um, um then os how the things are working how the kernel is communicating um what are the um, buffers stacks all those other things are actually kind of to be knowledgeable at some extent while considering memory forensics but we we won't be going through all of that okay because our, our ultimate content is not you know it's not something that we are doing a course on memory forensics but it is something in regards to the thing that it's useful for us that's the only reason right now i hope hope this this particular points are clear to you all okay there is no rocket science at all stayed in the chat also once okay now what i'm going to do is i have volatility and a few ram dumps ready with me so i have a lot of more dumps uh, throughout 
this you know whatever classes we are going through for lamb analysis there are a lot of challenges and a lot of practicals we are going to do i mean i am going to perform you can perform simultaneously with me it's all right right uh, if you want the the ram the ram uh, dumps that i am using let me know i'll tell you the sources from where i've downloaded or i'll just you know upload it on g drive all at once in one place you can download everything at once right that also is okay with for me now and uh, even you can analyze on your own system memory it's completely all right so throughout this we are going to do a lot of things and all uh, we are even going to do a small ctf kind of thing okay in memory analysis right so ctf is also there a small part of ctf you can just say for memory analysis practical okay now what we need to understand on this one is all we need to do is just you know open a cmd in that location where your volatility is present i don't know who is with this name i just need to i'll okay, okay. so we need to just you know open volatility in this particular um, sorry we need to open cmd wherever volatility is present the exe file is present so there are certain things that you need to understand while using volatility okay uh, today is just a brief case uh, you know uh, general brief about volatility uh, we'll move ahead we'll you know do a deep down we'll do a deep dive about volatility uh, other use cases other memory examples then using other tools and then this chapter will be concluded and then we'll move on to the sockment part okay now a few things while well, you need to consider using volatility are yeah, the few few facts that first of all you you can analyze uh, not only a single format of ram dump there are multiple formats of ram dump there may be a dd image okay there may be a raw there may be a bin right it just need to be a ram dump simple if it's a ram dump right regardless of you can say the format it's in bin dd raw whatever right the for famous one same thing it will actually do analysis and give you the output without for sure right it just needs to be a proper ram dump one thing for this now whenever so what i'll be doing is first i'm going to use this challenge.raw as a ram dump example but now see i am not sure that what operating system basically it belongs to and without even mentioning the operating system base i cannot use volatility to perform certain things that i want to it's not something that this is a dumb file just give a single command and you know it's a harry potter magic stick and everything will be done right it doesn't work this way in volatility ultimate point is we need to actually first analyze which kind of operating system it is um, this particular dumb belongs to upon doing that then and then only we can apply additional flags right based on the detection or uh, this detection also will be done by volatility on its own okay so here if you open this particular thing i have already you know given this command over here the first command okay it is for image info for getting the information of the dumb so for example i'll just type volatility um see so over here the entire file name is there right uh, what i could basically do is just to make things a bit easy um i'll just you know rename this just to volatility and not you know volatility and this and that and that and this long simple volatility.exe okay so volatility.exe or in linux just volatility hyphen f hyphen f stands for the file the file name that you want to actually go through and this is challenge.raw okay 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 what i'll do is i'll just try to make things a bit more easy for you okay i know i need to do this earlier but it's okay guess it's okay so i'll just open a cmd or uh, let me just run my uh, an admin and go into the volatility directory
it's again the same thing just a minute i mean the point is i'm just trying to make kind of you know look at nice in the cli so everything can be displayed the entire command can be displayed in one line right that was that's what i'm trying to do for you okay and uh, yeah it's done okay we will quickly now go through this cd volatility okay here if i okay sorry it's not linux i just forgot if i do dir you can see i have this volatility and this challenge file with me that i'm going to analyze now the command will be volatility hyphen f mention the file name and image info press enter right this will be the command volatility foundation right framework and it will automatically start the process depends on the how big the system image is or uh, how much data it's holding it, it may take a it may take a long time also right so we will just wait till it fetches some output the command is already given over here right output of certain commands is also i provided just you know give you an example this is what output we will be expecting again over here uh, yeah so it's determining the profile based on kdbg search now uh, it's not something that you know volatility will like exactly tell you okay this is the actual exact version of the os no it suggests you two or three that either this this or this right and we have to use any one as the profile flag okay so here is the output so what it said suggested profiles are it's win7 service pack 1 win7 man and win7 service pack 1 i mean similar but the bit of things may just go in here or there depending upon the different service packs and all that and been present so this is the particular profile so we are completely sure that this is win7 machine it's a windows 7 machine that we know now now using this profile info we have to move further okay now we need to always mention the profile to volatility so that it can you know um help us to execute other flags simple for example volatility hyphen f again the file name this time hash hash profile is equals to and this profile should be pasted over here okay so what are the things that i want to analyze is based on this profile now and what are the options that are available for me let us you know just see that so if i type hyphen h for help see it it gave me list of all the options i could you know do so i can i can do cmd scan i can do consoles i can do device tree i can do dll dump i can do dump registry i can do handles so many things and for everything you know certain information is uh, you know written been over here so if i do shell bags it will print the shell bag info right if i just type vault shell it will shell the memory image shell in the memory Im image if it's a you know virtual um, box or something or a vm or a virtualization through which the ram dump is made through virtualized os then that information can be fetched through Uh, mem dump you can you know dump the addressable memory of a running process i mean we'll be going through a couple of these modules not all okay don't consider all okay but a couple of these modules today and in the upcoming classes also right so what we need to do as of now just for an example um let's do an example for getting the process info okay so let's get an example of getting um process info that we are running okay so 
what are the processes that are running i mean that were running or what what are, whatever is the process information in this ram dump file i need to fetch in that so there are two things you can do pss ps scan you can do uh, ps list let us first try with ps list okay let us first try with ps list so for example i can you can see it's a valid command basically <coughs> ps list print all the running processes followed by e process list and here i can just now remove that hyphen h and i can just type ps list as the flag press enter and see i got a list of processes right i mean the processes that were that are present as a form of information in this particular memory in the ram dump okay now you can see the processes which are been running over here there is something known as dump it to txe right this could be something of the area of interest then there are a lot of svc host exe okay and there is win logon services right explorer.exe d dwm.exe right some processes which you have not heard that also are present over here okay now what what we need to do okay let's let's try to do a deep dive of this now there is an elevated version of ps list okay which is known as basically i just already said which is known as ps scan okay so ps scan okay so there is no kind of any specialized processes running apart from this so ps scan didn't return in any output what what next command basically um or the useful command which we can use ps tree which i think i have not written over here by mistake sorry for that a ps tree is you can say a very 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 useful command okay so if i just type ps tree yeah so the same is the output we are getting a list of processes but you can see there are some dot 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 so dot is the parent process dot dot is the child and triple dot is a sub child process that is running right and this is quite useful in terms of analysis how let us try to understand that now uh, there is services dot exe okay which is a parent process under that parent process they could be svc host dot exe so uh, i mean for this you you need to have a very good understanding of forensics of a particular thing so for windows you should be able to see that okay so svc host it could be under the services and all right even if you don't have how could you just you know determine using volatility it's not something you need to you know have a complete detail yeah as a forensic perspective you need to have but apart from forens forensic perspective you want to you know judge it out by by just looking at it um try to understand the pid and the ppid like the pid and the ppid values over here okay now so assuming this svc host exe whose ppid is 484 okay ppid right this ppid is matching with services pid can you see this over here right so in short this svc host exe is a legitimate st sv svc host so wherever this 484 is matching with the 484 of pid of services it means that it is a valid right so you can see all the other svc host it's matching 484 right so by looking at the pids and the ppids you can actually analyze you can actually conclude that okay this could be a thing that is something as a red right so you can see there are certain things over here such as explorer.exe okay mm -hmm. so this is a process which is going on uh, with a pid 324 
and under this there are sub processes which is dump it cmd vbox tray and vbox tray it, it's a something regarding virtual machine right so these three are under explorer.exe and something called as um dump it is running smss is running right lsas again it's a valid process if there are two lsas running that could be something wrong with it right so see win init.exe is 388 and the sub process for it is lsas over here with the same ppid 388 and the pid is 388 over here same goes with lsm okay i mean till now it is clear for everyone i mean i i you i you on track i mean or it's going something off the of the head something like that okay so please do let me know wherever you think that we need to stop okay now trying some other filters there are a lot of things that we are going to do looking at this information there are a lot of things that we are actually going to do in the upcoming classes but just you know this this particular session for today it is all about you know getting a kind of taste you know you can say a taste of volatility before we actually uh, you can say digest the entire thing right tasting is important so rather than going into deep analysis today itself we'll just trying to use some other flags that could be useful so uh, using uh, understanding this process vbox what if we run this vbox info right because there is a process running for vbox so vbox info this time i'll use this flag okay so memory image could not be identified as virtual box core dump okay cool so it may not be compatible or it may be due to the profile that is not matching with this particular memory image that is trying to analyze no worries on that just try to i mean this is something which i'm just doing you know hit and try hit and try rather than going into deep analysis and saying okay this is the exact thing this is the exact flag right now uh, let, let's try to do um a hit and try kind of thing right so dumps the password hashes and i i'm not sure i think in the latest versions the password hashes are not so easily uh, you know they are uh, you can say encrypted they are salt they are hashed we need to you know brute force them basically at times right the old school methods let us try to do hash dump oh now this is something interesting what we could find is there are three particular users administrator guest and hello right and these are the hash values for them okay upon cracking the hash you will uh, basically will get the pass okay now assignment for you all folks is to identify what hash it is or just you know try to decrypt the hash what do you think could be the hash over here this this particular hash what it could be which which it could be or whether it's something else or you can just let it know i have pasted it in the chat it's your basically task to do it now let me just copy and paste the entire thing for you so at least you know the small small tasks or small small assignments i expect you all people to go through and get on hands on all right i've shared the, the all the three accounts that we have fetched from the memory dump then what we could additionally look out for over here hive dump 
prints out a hive i mean this is something for registry before that we could actually dump the registry files out of the disk i don't want to dump the registry files as of now i, I don't want to dump anything as of now dumping we will do tomorrow um let us try device tree right so you're getting all the information regarding the devices so so there is a cd rom disk file network and this is something which additionally needs some further analysis and understanding right and a long output it is right device dump we could do as then we can go for crash info clipboard okay let, let us try to extract the contents from the windows clipboard so there could be some content present in the clipboard let us try to extract that So it's taking some time to fetch. Okay, let us wait. Uh, nothing found. So there is nothing been present that it could extract from the clipboard. No worries, right? I mean, a last one or two flags we'll try out for today, and then we will move further into the detailed dumping time and all. Now, what we could do is um. We could do a net scan. I mean, it's a part of tomorrow, but let us just, you know, we can do a net scan. Yeah, see, then do work information. Right. So this is for net scan. There are other a couple of flags, you know, we could even try it out. And we'll you know just keep off. We'll just you know do something for tomorrow's class. The, for screenshot module, I need to install pill as a dependency, so that is not there. So screenshot module is not working at all. Uh, anyways, right? Anyways, oh, we could do a last flag for today. Could be word info. Here it goes. Okay, 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 okay. Stop, stop, stop. Version info. Everything that is, you know, been present, version infos. Right? So I, I basically am expecting um that my intention for today was to give you idea about or the taste for volatility framework for memory analysis and as i said our upcoming classes that will be there you can say uh, we'll perform a lot of memory analysis use cases on different memories kind of small ctf also will be there for you folks if you are interested all right we could you know just do something out of it if we could play it out and it will be a important topic i mean it's a big topic for memory analysis in terms of memory analysis and then we'll move on to sockment you know because it's not something that we have included a, a lot of kind of forensic stuff the course is not forensics i am again repeating the course is not forensics the course is cyber crime investigation okay still a part of forensics has been added okay now where you can find this pdf basically let me just share the screen again i'm sorry so over here in the meet in our teams in the files in our team in our files you will find this volatility notes 
and as and on we'll move on okay if i'll find something useful i'll keep them up, updated okay i'll just you know update those particular things also okay so let me know if today's class was good not good something okay <laughs> and also do let me know if you have any questions or doubts anyone having any questions or doubts or anything if you don't even have just you know write down all good all clear in the chat at least it will be okay for me to understand okay that you know um you all are with me any one of you could you know just take up the initiative and just write it down any doubts or something like that or any or all good or all clear no worries okay i i am expecting then all all good all clear because no doubts have been present till now okay um i at times then i doubt you know no one responds i doubt that i am audible or not right so if possible kindly do you know respond so i can you know just know that okay i i am audible clearly right so that's all for today i uh, try to just you know bring up a mem dump or ram dump or or you know just create a dump of your own system image own system memory and keep your volatility ready and we can perform a lot of use cases using that okay so if it's okay for everyone please share today's video if possible yes sure sure okay definitely so that's all for today as of now we'll just wind up the class over here and we'll continue our classes for memory analysis for the upcoming week okay and see you directly on monday tomorrow is saturday and sunday so everyone thanks for joining have a good weekend um see you on monday and if you remember i had already given you a assignment for weekend and again i've given this assignment also assignments will be posted on edmodo also or will be notified on whatsapp group kindly utilize this weekends in kind of you know trying to understand the assignments that is what i wanted to say okay so thanks for joining everyone have a good weekend and meet you on monday